Oh my. <coughs> uh oh. I mean, you asked for this. This was like the silent episode. We, we said we'd give you the silent episode. That was only 45 seconds, man. What the heck? You let me down. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll go for another minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Uh, we're, we're here versus him. That was not, didn't go very well for me because I, in that entire 45 seconds, I fell down a ravine, landed right beside lava, and a creeper <laughs> fell beside me and blew me up and somehow <laughs> didn't kill me. <laughs> That's so good. That's so funny. <sighs> so that was like, my adventure. It's like you're silent and then the worst possible thing is happening <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be silent. It's like the opposite like of the Let's Play curse. Good lord. Yeah. I never have enough time to like... Because normally when you die, like... Generally you want to like try and take a screenshot of like your coordinates, right? I never find time to do that. And finally, for the first time ever, I found time to do it. And then I didn't die somehow. Not that I'm complaining, but... Yeah. <laughs> Stop this it. is a weird thing about Minecraft. It's like, like some of the prime strategies of the game feel like they shouldn't be in the game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like taking taking like a screenshot of your coordinates, for example. Yeah. Like that, that that doesn't feel like something that should be in the game, but it is, and that's fine. It's not saying that's a bad thing. Huh? But yeah. It's like, just... That's like a prime strategy of the game is to like use yeah. the F three menu and like look at your coordinates. Yeah, it feels and, very like like debuggy or something. You know? Yeah. But it's fine, and like, like the game's like a phenomenon, and people love it. And I think it, maybe it's like that freedom that's like really cool about it, and like why people yeah definitely the game so much. It's like some people are just like, oh, I'm just gonna build a tower, and then they build their tower or whatever. Mm -hmm. oh, tower. oh God, hey, God. How's your uh, how's your egg expedition going? Uh, <laughs> See what I did there? Fruitless. No. And by that I mean eggless, because egg eggs aren't fruit. I don't understand, Matt. I don't understand. Well, that's a dark cave down there that I'm not going into because I don't have any torches. A deep, dank, dark cave. Yee. 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 I like how there's a Wait. yee. There's a yee meme, and now there's a yeet meme. Yeah, that's a lot. One of them just... I don't know. Have you seen any of them? Either of them? I've seen yee memes. I haven't seen yeet memes. It's like a, I look. Oh, I don't even. One of my friends asked me what yeet is. I'm like, do you mean yee? He's like, no, yeet. And then like uh, I looked it up, and it's a guy dancing. And then like a guy like goes yeet. <laughs> That's so funny. It's really stupid. <laughs> it's like funny in the dumb way, but it's like all memes. Pretty much. Um, my friends from like um. I mean, I'm, I'll say back home because like I'm at college right now. My friends from back home, like they're they're obsessed with like the um. Uh, I'm trying to think of what you would call them. Like the the almost like the real like shit posty memes where it's like you know blurred images like glowy right. eyes like the images that aren't yeah, even, like, yeah. legible and like it doesn't even make any sense but it just looks so <laughs> stupid and is so stupid that it's like it somehow it elicits it just laughter. Works. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I don't know. Like uh, and and then my friend um, who runs this. Well, he doesn't run it, but he like found it and like is promoted the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a Facebook page group called Ginger's Chicken Coop. <laughs> and it's not very active anymore. <laughs> but all of the meme, like most of the memes around there, are revolved around the movie Chicken Run, which is like one right. of my, actually one of my favorite movies. Like it's so good. Um, but like they're all like that kind of meme where it's like you know glowy eye, like mm -hmm. super blurred out, like ridiculous hard to see images you know the absolute best meme have you heard of the elf on the shelf meme yes i so found stupid. one today that was so funny and like it it's so funny i think it's funny because it doesn't explicitly say it like i like um but the, there was one or like most of the elf on the shelf memes are like that because you they don't explicitly say it Ooh, gold that i'm not gonna actually no i will grab it gold's um, helpful uh, well, okay, so, like, there are two, it was, like, a two that were really funny. So, the, the first one that was funny was, um, uh, it was basically, 
you've heard on of Elf on the Shelf, but have you heard of? And then it has, a, like, a pot of like I want to say like tomato soup or like tomato sauce or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then in it is just a bunch of weird lines, and they it seems like they have to mean something, right? Uh-huh. Like they, they like it's like it like it, it's like a, it forms like a grid. And then, like, there's, like, two lines in the top left grid. There's, like, two lines in the top right grid. There's one line in the bottom left grid. And there's, like, one line with, like, a, per- a line perpendicular to it below it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, okay, this seems like a lot. Well, what it's supposed to be is you've heard of Elf in the Shelf, but have you heard of Lost in the Sauce? Because you're, like, spending all of this time trying to, like, oh figure out God. what the <laughs> stuff in the sauce means. That's so and dumb. when I figured that out, I was like, it's so good. <laughs> so then in the comments, right, in the comments, uh, someone uh, someone commented, you've heard on Elf of the Shelf, but then, but have you heard of, and it had a picture of, like, Tigger on on the head of an African child. Oh, my God. You can in the blanks. <laughs> Um, but that one, that one, like, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know why, but that one had me laughing for it's quite so a dumb. few minutes. Cause like, the thing is like elf on it, like, uh, oops, I hit the pop. Oh, on the mic. Um, I was wondering what that noise was. It's not like, yeah, like I hit I a hit... zombie. I was like, is that a weird zombie noise? What was that? <laughs> no, I, I hit the pop filter into the microphone. I, I think like the, the thing that makes those memes funny is like the fact that they're not even like. They don't even make any sense. Oh, but the Lost yeah. in the Sauce meme was so good because of the fact that it actually did make sense when you thought about it. I died. Yay. Oh, no. How'd you die, you scary goose? Skeleton. Spooky, scary skeleton. There was a, there was a, there was a, um, a Twitter post by Tom Hanks, and he said that David S. Pumpkins is coming back. I don't know what that is. Okay, there's an SNL skit called uh, Haunted Elevator. <laughs> okay. And the skit is is this is couple going into a haunted elevator, right? I mean, that kind of makes sense. Cause mm-hmm, it's, it's skit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, a haunt, it's this couple going to this haunted elevator. And uh, whatever, like, I, I'm try, I don't remember the actor's name. But there's this guy, the guy, like, it, the, there's a guy man in the elevator, right? And uh, he's, like, the guy, he's, like, supposed to be an actor like being like oh it's gonna be spooky and it's 100 floors of frights right so he's like welcome to 100 floors of frights and then like the the lady's like oh you know are you gonna are you gonna be scared and he's like well i mean she's like i'm gonna be so scared and uh the husband's like or boyfriend or whatever is like you know it's 100 floors of frights i'm probably gonna be scared too right um so they go to like the first few and they're like pretty scary but like they're cheesy scary so like it's still kind of funny Mm-hmm. But then it goes to this one at uh, this one stop and then it the door opens and it's Tom Hanks in a <laughs> pumpkin suit, a pumpkin tie, black shirt, um and two guys dressed up in full skeleton suits. Oh my god. With the skeletons like leaning with their arms like crossed leaning against him, <laughs> right? And he's and Tom Hanks is like, oh, "I'm David Pumpkins. You know, I'm going to scare the hell out of you." Wow. And and then this music starts playing, and I can I can literally like, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie when I say my on my Tinder bio I mentioned that I can play the David S. Pumpkins theme on the piano because oh I can, <laughs> um, but it goes it just does that on loop, right? And the skeletons do a weird dance, and David Pumpkins does a weird dance, and then at the end of the dance. Tom Hanks like, oh, any questions? And then the door is shut, and it just goes to the next floor. Wow. And and so the two the couple is in the elevator, and they're like, what was that? Like, why was that supposed to be scary or anything like that? And the guy running the elevator is like, I mean, it's a hundred floors of flights. They're not all gonna be winners, um, right? Uh, so they go through another you know stop or two, but then he just keeps showing up with like multiple <laughs> variants of the song. Like, there's one where this, there's one where like he like. Hit, slaps the skeleton's butt and they go like mommy <laughs> in the middle of the song um and so like the whole thing is really weird and then at one point a middle initial david s pumpkins just enters randomly and they're like where did this middle initial come from i'm so confused uh so uh, this gets really good and the final punchline just it, it's phenomenal uh, i won't spoil that but uh it, it's really ridiculous in the best way so I was thrilled to see that on it's Twitter Tom bad. Hanks posts a, a, like the the top line of a script involving David S. Pumpkins again. 
Is that a uh, was that an older skit or is that like kind of like it last was like year last something? year? It was okay. like last year. It was like one of the only funny SNL skits, right. like in recent years. The other there, like the ones that I've found really funny that SNL does recently are the ones where it's just like you like so ridiculous and off the wall that it's like you couldn't even make this up. Like the fact that someone was in a writer's room and came up with this idea is insane on its own. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. another one called, um, I want to say it was like Police Trainer or something like that. And it's just, it's um, it's like a bunch of cops being trained to like know when to shoot and to not shoot. And I think it was it, like, it was kind of like a subtle jab, like the recent yeah. like, yeah. stuff in America, right? But it wasn't, that wasn't the focus. So what happens is, um, what happens is like, you know, an old lady crossing the street is like not shooting her. And they're like, good restraint, good restraint. And it's, <laughs> like, I'm about to shoot you. And it's like, good job, good job, you know? Uh, and then this guy comes, then this guy, uh, who's Larry David dressed in this weird outfit or whatever with like bizarre sunglasses. Um, and I don't remember, I don't remember the name he gave, but it was like, I'm insert weird name here. And, um, he just says really weird stuff. It's like, I'm uh, whatever his name is. And do you like jelly donuts? Cause I sure do. And then, and then. Like the cop is like confused and then shoots him, and then, and then the the you know commanding officer is like, why'd you shoot him? He's like, he is not human. <laughs> <laughs> and so that just kept happening and it was like ridiculous. And then it's revealed at the end that this weird guy is the guy that made the police trainer in the first place, which is why he keeps showing up. Wow. So that one was pretty funny just because it was so bizarre. Yeah, sounds really stupid in a good kind of way. Yeah. Uh, so what else is going on? Um, Mario and Rabbids came out. Yeah, have that game. It's it's weird. I'm told it's actually a very good game, which is hilarious and really weird. Yeah, it's um, uh, it has its issues, but it's definitely a really yeah. like the strategy itself is really good. Like the actual mechanics are really good. The problem is, is that I don't think they use those mechanics to the best <coughs> they could, and so some of the combat encounters feel repetitive as a result. Mm. I would say the only bad thing is minions in rapid yeah. form. But honestly, they toned down the rabidness really severely. That's good. Uh, the only obnox- the only character I really hate is Rabid Peach, and that's just because it's selfies. like dated selfie references. Yeah. yeah. You play that game in 20 years, and it's it's not going to be funny. No. And and even now it's not funny. But I'm saying like if the goal was for them to be funny, then like that 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 that's kind of why I don't like the minions either. Like or all those kind of things where it's like they're trying to capitalize on pop culture stuff, and then it's like well in like fifteen ten fifteen years it's not gonna be funny anymore. So like yeah. you're, you're you're basically dating the movie to this particular mm-hmm. era of you know whatever. Yeah, I don't think that's always a bad thing. Cause, you know, you don't have to have every game be like, you know, a Super Mario Bros where it's just, you know, forever right. treasured, but yeah. I mean, I don't think they're going for Mario and Rabbids to be like one of the top 10 Mario games ever created and then, you know, that be yeah. on a pedestal in any kind of way. So, right. It'd be cool if they uh I mean, I, I'm kind of like 50-50 on this because, like, I'm I've always been a, the one to be like, well, I don't necessarily want sequels all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, which everyone else is like, why? I want more of this good game that I played. But I'm yeah. like, but I'd rather get something new and interesting, which mm-hmm. most people don't say that. You know, like, even if they say they want something new and interesting, they yeah. don't actually want something new and interesting. Well, I, I feel um, like if the world isn't completely explored, then it's fine to do. But you know, yeah, like. Bambi Whoa, comes this is out. so weird how this is carved out. It's just a like weird square. With, that's so bizarre. Okay, um, but yeah, so it's like uh, like um, I wouldn't mind a Mario and Rabbids too if they like actually evolved the concept and did something with it. Mm-hmm. And if they kept that going, that'd be pretty neat, I guess. I have Maybe. no idea if that game's doing well, but if it is, I could almost guarantee it's gonna get a sequel. The soundtrack's really good, though. Yeah, great Kirk Hope. Yep. Let me see what the sales figures are on this boy. What that classic banjo kazooie esque music? All right, cool. It's interesting. Like Grant Kirkhope definitely has his sound, mm-hmm. but his sound now is so different from what it was back on the N sixty four. Really? I like I'm listening to some of the songs. I've watched a bunch of streams of the game, and like it sounds like it sounds like something like straight ripped out of Banjo Kazooie to me. 
I mean, maybe it's because it's fully orchestrated. Maybe that's the big thing. Perhaps, um, yeah. Higher quality in general. Uh, they don't have the sales figures yet. They haven't reported them. Hmm. So it says NA on VG charts. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. Matt confirmed for Green Giants and or Santa Claus. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Giant. <laughs> The green giant is Santa Claus, actually. Oh <gasps> my god! <laughs> it's his really bad uh, secret identity that he also needs a secret identity for. Right. Uh oh, this is not good. Um, fucking. Uh, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. Um, I'm I'm actually like starting to get more and more excited for Mario Odyssey now that they've released yeah. more stuff. I've stayed so away I was from a lot of stuff. Very skeptical about it, and like by the time I made the Mario video, I was less skeptical. I was like, okay, this could be good. Mm -hmm. um, it could be kind of like what Mario Sunshine could have been, or you know, one of those games could have been if they went all out with the open mm -hmm. world situation. Yeah. And that and that sounds great. Um, I'm still hesitant, but like yeah. at the same time, it, it definitely looks really good. I'm definitely more mm -hmm. of a fan of like open world stuff versus like linear, like a galaxy right. in general. Yeah. But I know you like your. Uh... Your Super Mario 3D World and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, a witch. There was one video, I think it was by Nintendo Life, uh -oh. but he was, was calculating how many moons are in the game at a minimum. Um, because they know of, they know of, I believe, 10 kingdoms is what they said. Uh -huh. And if you look in the direct footage, like, yeah, there's, I where there's going through all that. the moons, and yeah. in that area, in the Sand Kingdom, it was 69 moons. That's insane. <laughs> so let's, so what the guy, what the guy from Nintendo Life was like, okay, well, let's just round down to 60. Let's get a low estimate, right? So if it's 60 and there's 10 worlds, that means there's 600 moons in the game. That's crazy. Holy crap. Right? And I mean, it's not going to be like Mario Sunshine or 64 where it's episodic, right? So it's not like you're you're getting kicked out to the hub world and all that. It's it's more it's more of like a explore the world and get stuff situation. So you can have more of them, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And even it's it, it like even compared to like getting a star or something in like Mario 64, like getting a moon in Odyssey seems very low key. It's just like do yeah. they do and then you get a moon and then that's it, right? Yeah. But it's because you're getting so many of them. So yeah. it's like, okay, cut down the time of that, but you're getting so many. It almost seems more like, you know, getting like a red coin or something. Yeah, almost. You read the coin though. Good. I'm looking forward to that. Might yeah, end, I'm pretty hyped really for that. It might end up being really. I, I like. I'm. Re I could go either way on that game, honestly. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, time to go. Which is throwing I stuff at me. Definitely gonna die soon, so that's fine. I believe in you. I'm just trying to kind of escape at this point. I'm I'm trapped in a prison of my emotions. <laughs> trapped in my emotions. Uh, you got Breath of the Wild, right? I yeah, we could discuss this. How have you beaten it? Any any other no, thoughts? I haven't. I've beaten two of the divine beasts. Ooh, kinda. Um, and I want to go to the Goron area next, but I need to get some fire resistant armor. But I just haven't like mm -hmm. played it in a while. Uh, I don't know. It's good. It has its problems, but it's good. Yeah. Uh, the best Switch game I own at this point is Splatoon 2, but that's also really interesting, also because um, a lot of the people I've been talking with are really torn on the game. So there's some people that like really like the game and some people that are like really, really don't like the changes that it made from Splatoon 1. Like what? Um, well, the maps tend to be more small, a smaller, uh, more combat focused. Mm -hmm. And it's more like instead of being like more open, it's down, there's more like paths that lead to a center area. where right. So so because of that design, it's focused more on combat. So if you're talking about like your um, time to kill, you know, from like spawn or whatever, um, um, then it's definitely much lower because um, because there's a lot more violence and like it, not violence, but you know what I mean. There's a lot more like focus on like killing other players in the game, mm -hmm. and people thought that, that uh, a lot of people were like, "That's kind of not fun." Because I would rather like yeah. uh, the fact that you could just digress from the combat and go and cover turf is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, my my thing is, I think I like Splatoon two more anyway. Um, because I, one, I kind of like like the combat focus, even without it being like the main <clears throat> score thing. Yeah. So it's kind of it like you helpful. go in, yeah. you kill some dudes, and they explode in your ink, and they just get out of your way. Right? Yeah, so exactly. That's pretty cool. So like, I I can understand how it's like okay, I don't want to be killing people all the time in a Splatoon game, especially Turf War. But like, I kind of like the change. I think it works. 
Um, I agree that the maps aren't as varied as in Splatoon 1. Yeah. But I'm hoping that some more new maps will help change that. Because back in Splatoon 1, like, yes, the opening maps were definitely more varied. But you got sick of them pretty quick. Definitely. And then as they added more, like, some of my favorite maps are also some of other people's least favorite maps. Mm -hmm. Like, I loved Camp Triggerfish. And right. everyone hated that map because it was so huge, right? But I was like, nah, that's really cool. So I, I hope that, and especially for a game like Splat Zones, for example, Camp Triggerfish is really cool because you're shooting like across a gap to cover the other Splat Zone. Yeah. And it was really cool. Um, I, I also really like how, the, how ranked mode has kind of changed in Splatoon 2 because the maps seem better catered for it. Mm -hmm. that's, one, that's one place where I'd say the maps are better in Splatoon 2 is for ranked stuff. Yeah, I, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. The only thing... <laughs> Well, I, I don't like. I still don't like how Salmon Run just you can only play during this time. That's that's. I think that's dumb. Um, I, I think it's dumb now. Um, I, I like. I the reasoning behind it, right, is that, um, you know, it, years down the line, right, you know, a lot of times you log into a multiplayer game. It's dead. And everyone's picking different maps right. and different modes and different stuff like this. You never actually find a match with anyone. That's okay. kind of why they have the map rotation in the main game, right? Because it's like okay. Uh, you're oh, everyone's playing on this map. So uh, as long as there's eight people playing in the world, like you'll find a match pretty quick. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So that that makes sense. I think the thing with Salmon Run though is that now they have a huge player base, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like everyone's gonna want to play Salmon Run at some point. There's gotta be at least you know four people in the world at any given time that wants to play Salmon Run. Yeah, 100%. Um, and so because of that, I I think that's a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I remember there, I was reading like an interview. Um, I think it was a Nintendo America guy. But what he was saying was that a lot of times American audiences don't understand like the Japanese design experience. Like a lot of times if you go into like a restaurant in Japan, for example, like if you ask for like salt on something or, some, or, or you know, something like that, they're going to say no because they're giving you a specific catered food experience that mm -hmm. they want you to consume in the way that they made it. Right. Right problem with that is that some people like things more salty than other people mm. um so um so the, the thing is like in salmon run for example it's like the reason why they're making you use those specific weapons and um you know giving you those specific encounters that's what the designed catered experience that they want you to have is and i can respect that that the the thing is is that i i agree that it's like okay well the times when you're not playing salmon run like that's not a catered that's k that's that's not necessarily a good catered experience it's yeah. a bad experience yeah so it's like i would be fine with them being like you have to use these four weapons and they switch right and you're gonna you have to play on this map until this time right but i'd rather salmon run always be available yeah, at least until nice. a point when they their player base diminishes and they're concerned about like you know yeah. people being able to actually play the game. I do feel like if they you know made that an update though, everyone would be extremely angry about that. So I think if they were going to do that, they would have to do it now anyway. Maybe, but I don't know. Uh, the only thing, the only other thing that like I hate, <laughs> which is so minor and no one plays Splatoon for this reason, but I hate how like you find the scrolls and all that in the single player. They have to pretty much look over every single ledge. Like, that is extremely annoying to do and tedious, yeah. in my opinion. I, I mean, I've kind of, I kind of am good at guessing those kind of things, so mm. it didn't really bug me that much. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely see how, for some people, I that mean, would... Yeah. Normally, uh, it isn't, like, too bad to, like, try and find them, but it's just the fact that you could miss something if you don't look over every single ledge. That annoys yeah. me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, we are at 24 minutes now, so if you okay. want to wrap things on. I think we'll on. call it. Yeah. What the? Yeah, we can call it. Goodbye, everybody. Don't Bye, forget everyone. To... Wait, 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 wait. See this cow right here? This cow is uh -huh, a representation uh -huh. of the audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Go on. Goodbye. <gasps> I just threw a pork chop at it. No! I just gave oh. the audience food. Good job. Good. I mean, I saw that. I, I can see what's going on right now. Two more. They're really nice. Now I'm gonna punch you in the face. Goodbye. Ow! I, I, I am that cow. <laughs>